Good evening and welcome. This is a public hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Evanston. The zoning ordinance directs this body to hear applications for major variations, special uses, and appeals from decisions of the zoning administrator. Depending on the type of matter, this board will make either a final determination or send its recommendation to City Council. Present tonight are board members Mary Beth Burns, Beth McLennan, Clara Weinberg, my name is Matt Rogers, the current chairman, and therefore we have a quorum. Also present from the City Zoning Department is Melissa Klotz and Mario Tretto from the City Legal Department. This is a formal meeting and there are rules that govern our proceedings. Most important, only one person speaks at a time to accurately record the proceedings. Anyone who wishes to address the board regarding any matter on the agenda will have the opportunity to do so at the appropriate time. Our normal procedure is to hear from the staff on the documents on file. We will then receive testimony and other evidence from the applicant or appellant. After hearing from the applicant or appellant, any person with a legal interest in property located within 500 feet of the subject property may present evidence, reasonably question witnesses, or seek a continuance of the hearing. Next, others who wish to make a statement regarding the matter may do so at that time. When all opposing testimony and other statements have been heard, the applicant or appellant will be given the opportunity for rebuttal or closing statement. All testimony will be under oath. Although we do not apply the strict rules of evidence, please limit your testimony or statement to your personal knowledge. When you testify or make a statement, please state your name and address and be sure to sign in on the, provi on the provided sign-up sheet. We are audio and video recorded in this space. Please make sure you are at a microphone when asking questions or making statements so that you can be properly recorded. All proceedings are subject to broadcast at a later date. When all of the testimony, evidence, and statements have been received, the board will close the record and begin its deliberations. We usually try to adjourn by 11 p.m. Any matter not concluded at tonight's hearing will be continued to our next regularly scheduled meeting. We do have three items on the agenda this evening. Um, the first matter is for 1901 Dempster Street. Um, the applicant is not present, my understanding is at this time. Um, is the applicant for 1460 Dewey present? He is. And the third matter, 622 Sheridan Square. Um, so those are the three matters we will be discussing this evening. Um, our first matter of business is to approve the minutes from our meeting on the uh, on March 4th. Um, has everyone who attended that meeting had an opportunity to read through the minutes? Yes. Sir. Are there any comments, corrections? Um, hearing none, is there a motion to um, approve the minute meeting, the meeting minutes? Sure, I move that we approve at, uh, the meetings from the March 4th, excuse me, the minutes from the March 4th meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Therefore, the minutes are approved. Um, we have had a request this evening. Um, since our first uh, matter of business, the applicant is not present at now, at present, um, I will go ahead and we had been asked to move the matter for 622 Sheridan Square um, to the beginning of our agenda um, based on some information that was shared with us uh, through an email from staff. Um, does anyone have a problem with doing so? Nope. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and move that matter to the beginning. I will also note for the record that um, board member Violetta Cullen has also just joined us. Um, that's fine. Um, and so we will begin with the matter for 622 Sheridan Square, and I'll ask that that be read into the record, please. 
Donna Lee Floater, architect, applies for major zoning relief to convert a one-unit condominium into two units at an existing multifamily residential residence. The applicant requests to reestablish a total of 31 units in a legally non-conforming multifamily residence that currently consists of 30 units, where a maximum 21 units are allowed due to the lot size, zoning code section 6874D. The Zoning Board of Appeals is the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record are variance application submitted February 18th, 2014, standards form, zoning analysis, plat of survey dated September 21st, 1976, site plans, image of property, aerial view of property, zoning map of property, historic preservation memo, and spark meeting minutes of March 5th, 2014. Thank you. Um, if I could ask that anyone who would be giving testimony in this matter or speaking on this matter to us be sworn at this time by raising your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? Thank you. If I could ask uh, Ms. Floterer to come up to the lectern and please tell us about your project. Uh, thank you for accommodating my client's request to move ahead of the agenda. Uh, the building was built in 1925, oh, 1923 with 31 units on the property that is the size that it is. Um, in 2005, my client and his wife purchased two adjoining units, one above the other at 622, units number two and three and applied for a permit and built an interior stair to connect those two units. At this time, my client uh, and his wife are divorced. He uh, ha is having a difficult time maintaining the existing sized unit for his own use. He has made attempts to sell the unit as it is, but has not uh, had a, 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 an appropriate purchaser. Um, he has been given advice from real estate agents that he could be more successful if he were to take out the stairs and re return them to the existing units as they were originally built. Um, other evidence is the, well, the units still have two legal descriptions, uh, two PIN numbers from the county. He pays two assessments to his condo association. Uh, the units themselves were not, uh, no exterior work was done to the units and they both maintain their existing doors to common space. Um, if you have questions, we'd be happy to answer as best we can. In, in, in talking about the units being separate, both also maintain separate kitchens, separate bathrooms, so there would not be no additional work that would need to be done other than removing a stairwell? Currently, the second floor has part of a kitchen. So we would be returning the full use of a kitchen to the second floor unit, which is the one that Mr. DePartolo is intending to keep for his own and sell the third floor. But the ba there are bathrooms on both floors and uh, appropriate other spaces. And because this is a condominium, I'm assuming this is this matter has been discussed with the condominium board. Is there any? Uh, to my back? knowledge, it has. It, uh, Mr. DeBartolo was present for those hearings with his association. If I may, hi, I'm Anthony DeBartolo, property owner. Um, we had a board meeting. I presented my plans, pretty much waiting for the permits. Okay. That's how it generally works. Other questions from other members of I, the board? I just have one question, which is, how do you respond to the um, requirement? One of the, one of the, um, God, I can't remember the word for it. Um, standards. One of the standards, which is that the, um, the project isn't solely about financial gain, because it seems to me that the, re the primary reason, one of the primary reasons that you are separating the two units is so that you have the ability to sell them. So and can you- and, and prevent financial loss, from my perspective. Okay, which is financial gain. So can you just respond to that? How do you meet that standard that it's not solely about that? I don't quite understand the question. 
I believe the question, one of the standards that we have to find in order to grant any zoning relief is that the um, main purpose for doing whatever is being requested of us not be strictly based on an income um, or a financial basis. And so I think that what the question is, is kind of <coughs> exploring is the fact that the separation of the two units would occur so that one could be sold. The separation of the two units would occur so that I could use the property along the lines for which I am now financially required to maintain. I have two tax bills. I have two assessments. I think it's, another it, way of... It, it, the property as it exists now is impossible to sell. So, I, uh, I mean, to, to, to change the property to where I can, I don't look upon it as gain so much as preventing a loss. If, if, if I have to sell at a substantial loss, I'm adversely affecting property values of all my neighbors, I mean, in addition to causing harm to myself. It's, it's more an issue of financial loss than any gain. And, and ultimately, oh, if, if you want to look at the numbers of the whole deal, just I, I, I'm not making any money at all. I, mean, the, I think this is a unique property. I mean, we're going back to the original I, building. I'm, so not, I'm, I'm not arguing yeah. either way. I just, wanted, I just wanted some clarification. Yeah, the, mo the main motivation is not to make money flipping a condo unit. It's I have no other option. Okay. Well, I also would just like to say a two-story, four-bedroom, three-bath condo for a single person is a lot of square footage. And that would alleviate his, you know, he doesn't have a need for that big of a unit. So that would be another reason outside of the financial. Thank you. Uh, and, and just to refresh my memory, I know it's in the, in the documents. Uh, what year was this unit combined? Uh, 2006, 2005. Okay. The stairs were built in 2005. Okay. And did you did you purchase the second unit at that roughly that time with the intent to create? The closing was on the same day for both units. Okay. Right. He and his wife purchased both of them at the same time. They hadn't lived in either previously. They were purchased together. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the board? No. Hearing none, I know there was someone else who wanted to speak to us on the matter. So I'll let him go ahead and, and address the board. And then we'll give you an opportunity to rebut anything, sum up anything at the end. Good evening, my name's Todd Wilson. I live at 642 Sheridan Square. We live in a three flat. I just had a couple of questions. How big is your unit, total, combined? Square footage? Yeah. So in other words, you see you're effectively splitting this in half and making two units of around 1,100 apiece or something, or? What I would be doing is- Excuse me, I'm going to enter. I'm going to ask that you have a microphone here just to make me. sure that we can pick everything <laughs> up. <laughs> What, I, what I'll be doing is removing a staircase that right. joins, uh, that right now joins two existing separate units. So they'd be about 1,100 apiece or something like that. They'd be the, that was the original something layout, yeah. Right, well that's, that's the point too. I originally came thinking, my God, we're going to single room only occupancy. I mean, that would that mean that I can take mine and split it in half or thirds or something like this? But I'm thinking this is taking, if you want, taking it back to what it was originally in 1923, then we've come, it's an historical district. Your building has been designated an historical building. You would actually probably be doing our neck of the woods a favor by bringing it back to the separate units as it was in 1923. I would agree. So that's all I, as I say, I was thinking of doing it the other way. My God, you know, we're going to end up with like, you know, a, a ton of little tiny little things. Everybody has 10, you know, 50 square feet or something, and we have people, no, no the, parking or anything else, but I think this is fine. The intent is to rest restore the configuration to how it existed for 80-some-odd years. Our building years. is 1923 also, for the record, so. Right, and, I, and just to sort of reiterate, the reason that we're here is because, um, obviously, zoning law in 1923, um, I don't think it existed fully yet for the city of Evanston, probably, did it? It did. 
did it. Oh, we're ahead of our time. Um, and so the fact is that the building is a non-conforming based on the number of units. And so by any change in the number of units, technically exactly. we would have to um, make a determination so this on is the variance. back to what it was in 1923. Right. Sounds okay to me. Thank you. Anyone have any additional comments? If not, I will let Ms. Floater, if you have anything you would like to say in summation. Unless there are more questions. I don't believe that there are. Um, so with that matter, we will go ahead and close the record and begin our deliberation and also go through the um, seven standards that we have to find uh, in order to grant any major variation. It seems to me that there seems to be a consensus of people on the board that this is not an, an issue um, because of the fact that in reality we are restoring something to a pre-existing condition, not necessarily creating anything additional, um, and it doesn't seem that there will be much change to the, to the physical structure of the building other than simply removing a stairwell and sort of uh, restoring part of a bathroom on, on one of the floors. Um, I also would say that, well, I'll get into that, otherwise I don't have anything to say when I go through the standards. Um, so with that, we have the standards that we have to find. The first standard, the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use, enjoyment, or property values of adjoining properties. Um, I believe this standard has been met. It would appear that uh, to most people outside of being in the unit, there probably would be no appearance whatsoever that these units are joined. Um, and because of the fact that we are not making substantial changes to the physical structure and the, the fact that uh, we would be having two properties um, that seem to fit in with a number of the other properties in the building, I believe that this standard has been met. Number two, the requested variation is in keeping with the intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, when we look at the, this particular area, um, the fact that it is a, a multifamily building and um, basically has 30 units or 31 units, has 30 units, we're going to 31 units. Um, it's not adding an undue impact onto the neighborhood. Um, so I don't believe that this, this is causing any problems in adhering to the intent of the zoning ordinance. <coughs> Number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. Um, the fact that two properties were purchased and joined um, through a common stairwell um, does make this a somewhat unique property. Um, because of the fact that it also maintains two separate descriptions and PIN numbers um, also makes it a little easier to handle the, the difficulty that's created here as opposed to trying to separate into two separate PIN numbers. Um, so I believe this standard has been met. Number four, the property owner would suffer a particular hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the, or of the regulations were to be carried out. We have heard some testimony from the applicant that he has tried to sell the unit in an as-is condition and has been unsuccessful in doing so. Um, so to force him to, to sell the unit in that condition without looking at this at least as an option, I believe would cause a particular hardship to him and therefore the standard has been met. Number five, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property. Um, this had a little bit of discussion earlier, but I believe that because of the fact that uh, the property will be sold in a condition in which it was purchased um, by the current applicant um, is not necessarily creating anything that, it, that if he had just happened to own two separate units and it was trying to sell one of them um, over the other. Number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property. Um, 
This is a little bit of a debatable issue, but at the time that the units were purchased and conjoined, I don't think anyone would have necessarily seen the real estate market being in the condition that it is in today. And although we have seen it come back for a number of areas, um, condos and multifamily units uh, still are bearing the, the slower part of the recovery. And so I believe that this standard has been met Number seven, the requested variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation among the feasible options identified before the ZBA. Um, I don't think we can get a lot simpler than taking out a stairway and adding um, a bathtub, or I'm sorry, a kitchen, if the kitchen is what was being added uh, or repaired. Um, so I think that this is definitely one of the more minor uh, deviations that we've seen come before us on these types of things. So I believe that standard has been met. Is everyone in agreement with my findings? Yes. Therefore, I will ask if there is a motion. Uh, I move in the case of 14ZMJV-0011622 Sheridan Square that we grant zoning relief for the applicant to return uh, the now divided two units back to the historic, uh, excuse me, to <laughs> just opposite, the now combined single unit back to its historic two unit status. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded by just about everyone. Um, therefore, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Having five ayes and zero nays, your project can proceed. Um, good luck. Thank you. And thank you again for You're welcome. Um, again, I don't see the applicant for 1901 here yet. OK. <laughs> okay, we're going to take just a, a two second recess while staff checks on something. Mm -hmm. no. no, that's not my problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> Agenda for 1460 Dewey, um, which is 14 ZMJV 0010. Um, and I will ask to have that matter read into the record, and then we will hear it. Nick Lawson of Lawson Properties Incorporated, property owner, applies for major zoning relief to rehabilitate a single family residence with a one story addition, one car detached garage front porch and front yard fence. The applicant requests a rear yard setback of 12.65 feet where 30 feet is required, zoning code section 6847A4, and a 12.19 foot front yard setback for a roofed 
open front porch yard obstruction where a 24.3 foot setback is permitted. Zoning code section 6419B1. The applicant also applies for zoning relief to construct a four foot high wood picket fence with 70% opacity in the front yard where fences are not permitted in front yards. Zoning code section 6467F2A1 and beyond the front facade of the principal structure where fences must be located a minimum of three feet behind the front facade of the principal structure. Zoning code section 6467F2E. The Zoning Board of Appeals is the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record are variance application submitted February 20th, 2014, standards form, zoning analysis, plat of survey dated April 4th, 2013, site plans, elevations, letter of objection, image of property, aerial views of property, zoning map of property, and spark meeting minutes of February 26th, 2014. Thank you. If at this point I could have anyone who may give testimony on the matter for 1460 Dewey, please be sworn at this time by raising your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? I do. Thank you. And if you could please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Nick Lawson, and uh, I live at um, 1461 uh, Florence, which is uh, basically a block east of the property we're talking about. Thank you. If you could please tell us about your proposal. Okay. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the house. It was sort of delinquent for three or four years. Um, you know, two feet of water in the basement and full of termites. Uh, it was about 800 square foot originally when it was built, and the, the um, serrated lines there were two little add-ons, I think were put on in the 60s. <clears throat> it was built with wood going into the ground, so that enabled the termites to get into the building and sort of chew it up. So we took those off, um, but it's so small, so we, we, our plans we submitted are to excavate the basement and, and add sort of double the square footage there, but we really couldn't make anything work without sort of adding a, a small addition on there, which would be the... Um, the master bedroom, so I didn't really want to impact beyond that. Um, but because the building's sort of squashed into the into the um, the northwest corner of the lot, it's it's just there's really no backyard and there's no front yard. So um, it will definitely be for a young family. It's an entry level home, um, probably in the mid 300s. Um, every single house in that neighborhood has got kids, so I'm sure this will be the same. And I was just looking to create a, a secure yard space, a fenced yard space, without visually impacting on, on everybody around us. I know uh, how you guys feel about fences, <laughs> so um, I was hoping we could, it actually was looking for 36 inches, not, not 48 or 42, um, as small as possible that could create some security for um, some young children without visually impacting the street or the neighbours. Um, the house directly south uh, is Mike and, and Carolyn's place, and they have a picket fence. And so uh, I thought it may be appropriate uh, to match that. And uh, I have a picture. Do you want to look at it? Yes. Oh, uh, you have an electronic picture. Um, that was the easiest thing to do. That's fine. I'm going to ask that you forward that to oh, okay. Melissa. I can do that. But let us see it as well, just so we have something in the record to show what you are showing us. So if we can just take a... So... Um, you took this picture? I did. And um, when did you take the picture? About an hour ago. And this, this is going to sound like a stupid question, but does this accurately represent the condition of the property? Pretty much. All right. Not much has changed in an hour. Not much. Um, uh, and for clarification, is this, are you standing in the driveway that is the driveway of this property? Correct. I am standing. Um, in the middle of their driveway, which uh, adjoins my proposed driveway. So it's, my garage would be directly next to theirs. It would sort of be a, a mirror image. So roughly this driveway would be where the 11, or I'm sorry, the 71 right. is on. Exactly. And the drawing we're looking at up here for the right. site plan. And their garage is essentially in the same place. It's a double garage. It's attached to their house. And that picket fence wraps around the whole property. So okay. it would sort of be, there's their house, my house, and then the alley. Um, so. 
you know if they got a uh, permit to build that fence? They did. I believe it's historic. I'm not quite sure why, but it happened many years ago. I think they, Mike was telling me he got it about 18 years ago. So He got the, the permit and variance 18 years ago? Something like that. He's a very thorough guy. So he, took, he did it the right way. <laughs> um, so anyway, of course, uh, Carolyn's done a, a beautiful job. She set it back from the pathway, and it's, she's planted perennials. And in summer, it sort of disappears. It's very nice. So I was hoping I could do the same thing, set it back from the parkway and plant it out um, so that you couldn't see it, essentially, except in winter. So uh, that would, there's a beautiful aspect, a southeasterly aspect from, um, from Dewey there. It's really the only aspect you have um, and the only area you could sort of secure. So that's, that's what I was looking to do. Currently, there is no garage on the property, is that correct? Right. And you said the house has been sitting empty for about three to four years? Yeah, I th it's, it hasn't really been able to be lived in for at least that long, and it sat with the bank for several years, and, you know, I drive by it every day, so eventually I, I asked someone. And, uh... <clears throat> So uh, it was going from 800 to 600 square feet plus the, the master suite, which is, makes it a, you know, a, a sort of a functional home. Uh, at 800 square feet, it just wasn't big enough to do anything with, you know. So what is the overall square footage now? Oh, I think what I'm proposing is, is about, uh, about 1950, I think, with the, with the basement. That includes the basement? Yeah. Is that, should, and, I, uh, should I do that or not? Is the basement livable space? It will be. Right and, and how much how much livable space is in the basement? There will be it's a, it's the um, it's the exact footprint of the house less the addition. Uh, the addition will just be a crawl space, but the the house as you see it um, will be. And what and what is the current square footage on the house? Uh, it's about forty by twenty, uh, eight hundred square feet. So about eight hundred square feet. So you're roughly talking about an eight hundred square foot. Basement and a 350 square foot addition? Uh, about 250 for the addition. So it's at about. That's 1850. Thank you. Are there questions from other members of the board? I do, I do have questions. So you yes. heard me ask the question to the other gentleman, right, about the standard, about not exclusively not asking for the variances exclusively for a monetary gain yep as a developer yep your goal is to make money sure if you don't make money you don't stay in business it's so when you mm -hmm. bought the property right you had to have known that you were in a situation where you'd need variances no i didn't know that okay so i, I had no idea so you may not have done your due diligence then probably i, I, I live in a house with a, with a hedge that okay. was planted in 1890, and um, it's, a, it's also a front yard. I'm set back from Lake, so um, yeah, I had I didn't know about the fence rule. <laughs> well, well, it's a couple things, right? It's the fence, it's the front yard setback, it's the rear yard setback, it's the side yard setback. It's there's there's a lot of things you're asking for. I am. So, just I'm asking you to address that. Well. Um, the house has been empty. The house was uh, left. There was nothing done to it for years and years and years and years and years. It's an eyesore. It's a problem house. Um, it's by far the worst house in uh, within 500 feet either direction. So um, no one wanted to touch it except the bugs. And uh, it was probably six months away from falling, completely falling apart. So um, I decided I wanted to do something about it because I have a vested interest in my community, not just as a developer, I live a block away, um, and uh, it'll, there'll be Dewey kids that move in there. And I've had a kid, Dewey, for you know 12 years, I've got three kids who've gone through there. So um, I'm also a landscaper, and uh, you know I, the property just drives me nuts. I drive by it every day. So it's got to be used for something. It, it is, it could be. You know, the, the house is not in the middle of the lot, it's in the back right-hand corner. So it does, it, it does open it up, and it really looks nice from, like I said, from, um, from the southeast. It could be really pretty. 
um, who wants to buy it? Why not create an entry-level home for a young family in Evanston? There's hardly any. You know, it's really expensive. So I think this is, a gr and I know for a fact, people, I, there's, this is a great opportunity for someone with a young child or children to um, access the Dewey District for not much. So. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the other questions I have is the porch. And I mm. understand sort of the friendly aspect of a porch and that it gets people on the street. Mm -hmm. What I have odds a conflict with mm -hmm. is that a fence is the exact opposite. A fence is to keep me away from my neighbors and to separate me from the street. Yeah. So you're asking for a variance for one to be much more open yeah. and friendly, and you're also asking for a variance that says, no, I really want to be closed off. I don't want to be closed off visually at all. It's purely for safety. It's purely, I've, you know, I've had kids, um, and it was just a blessing. One, having somewhere for them to run around in summer, and then two, having a basement, you know. Um, so I do not want a visual barrier at all, in any way. Um, I would make the fence this big if I could, but, and it doesn't need to be closed in any way. Um, I think the rear fence is a different matter. You do want privacy from the alley and your rear neighbors, but I think the, f the front is what I'm trying to do is not create a visual barrier at all. In fact, improve it. Have you, have you considered at all not having the fence along the north line, but letting the fence die into the house at the northwest corner? and at the southeast corner of the house actually having that fence die into the deck or something like that so that you're leaving the corner of the property open? Um, north is the alley. Yeah, I'm assuming north is up. North is the alley, right. Right. So say that again. So sorry. on the west side of the house, yep. so the north fence all along the alley. Oh, that's along the alley. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's right up, it's 24 inches off the alley. And um, it's a tricky spot. It's a lot of traffic through there. And right now there's a, a, there's a three foot uh, chain link fence. Right. And that has been a, a huge impediment, I'm sure, to our families. Um, I, I guess uh, mm -hmm. trying to take, I guess, the, the fence off the front property line, off of Dewey, and actually letting, so that east fence line, let, take that back to the face of the house and just let it die into the house. So that um, what about so that the porch is open to the street, which is what what about returning the fence where it says proposed open porch, those yep. words? Yep. What about returning the fence west into the house there? Something like that. That's fine. Just so that as long as it gives, um, you know. 400 square foot for a kid to throw a ball to his old man. I mean, you know what I mean? It's If I return it back to the house prior right. to that, I think it's too small. I, I, I would probably opt to, you know, I don't know, spend $4,000 and plant a, a mature hedge. But if you returned it where those words are and then you had the front steps open, um, yeah, no, that looks, that's probably better. That's pretty. Have you considered just waiting and not doing, building the fence as part of the development? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it because I'm building it for kids. And then that's... What, but what if your buyer doesn't have kids and now we have a fence there with... They all have kids. <laughs> all buyers universally have kids. Yeah. Okay. It's Every all, single one. All entry-level no. buyers in Dewey District have kids. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's I'm, I'm not kidding. There's no other reason you move there. There's a park across the street. Yeah. Penny Park's two blocks away. It's too far for, right. for a two-year-old. Yeah. They've all got kids. But this house. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but... Or it's all two-year-old kids. Yeah. So it's, you know... I'm essentially I'm building it for my kids and myself. So, so in actuality, the, mm. the proposal that is before us on our description includes a four-foot-high wood picket fence with 70% opacity. But that sounds like that is not what you are proposing at this point, based off of the 
image that we have seen right. and the general conversation that you've been having with us. Because the, pic the picket fence really is more of a 50% opacity, which helps all of us a lot. Does it? Yeah, sure. because one of our concerns is always the blocking of... Wait, when it says 50% or 70%, does that mean... Um, Three inches. That means it's seven. The 50 is better, right? Yes. Yeah, whatever you want. 50 is more open. Yeah, I'll pull it apart. You know, just <laughs> just just not quite as big as a baby's head. How about that? Sure, that four foot, that four <laughs> inch rule, like a baluster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you just build a baluster all the way yeah. around? Yeah. yeah, that's all I'm looking for. And lower, you know, lower. And I, I and I'm assuming in this neighborhood, I, I know one of the things we always try to find is off street parking. But I'm assuming parking probably like throughout most of the city is somewhat challenging at times. Yes. I live near there and it's a very residential area. And so sometimes, not a lot. And I've seen your fence. I walk my dog past there almost every day. And his fence is pretty much like uh, overpowers that this house is in the back of the lot, almost. On the side of the alley though, it is very busy. Other questions for Mr. Lawson? Is there anyone else who wish to speak with us this evening? If not, uh, Mr. Lawson, if there's anything you'd like to say in summation before we close the record? It'll look beautiful. I'll make it good. I'll make it beautiful. <laughs> the fence is just the beginning. You know, I'm going to soften it up. So anyway, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget your. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to want that. And please do make sure to forward a copy of that on to Melissa for us, please. With that, we will go ahead and close the record and um, begin our deliberation. Thoughts from the board? Yeah, so the only, so the only place that I'm, you guys know that I get stuck on porches, right, because of what they can be in the future. So I do like that it makes the neighborhood friendlier. I do like that it gets people outdoors. I do like that it actually helps with the elevation of this house, because this is not an attractive house. Um, what I would like to do is, can we put in the ordinance that you can't enclose this porch in the future? Because it doubles the size of the house. And that's no longer appropriate. And then it's no longer an entry level. And an entry, and that's one of the other things I see here, right? Is it's not exclusively for money because I think it's important to have entry level homes in Evanston, which is one of my key points about all these giant additions we get. Is you're pricing out entry level, and that's part of the diversity of the community that's good. So if at any point that gets enclosed, now this house is big and all sorts of things that I don't like. So are you guys amenable to that, to adding that to the ordinance that that porch cannot be enclosed? Fine with that. Sounds good. I think that that's perfectly fine for us to do because that's one You're of the right. things that sure. we often get asked at a later date to enclose a porch. Um, and so I think that if we made the approval that we give on this conditional on the fact that that not be approved, that would also be giving direction to any future boards who may hear this. And whereas they are not necessarily duty bound to it, at least they know where our thinking was and, and we approve this with that condition. Otherwise, it may not have gotten approved. So I think that is a fine, a fine um, addition or a fine um, condition to be placed on the granting of a variance. Other thoughts from board? The only thing is, I'm also probably the only one who had a problem with the fence. Um, and again, just because I like the idea of trying to keep as much of the front yard open, that porch open to everything. So Mr. Lawson was amenable to moving it and reducing some of his, what he's asking for. How does anybody else feel about that? I think it's fine, again, to, to put that condition in, as well as making it um, on the condition. Uh, like I said, uh, currently before us, we had a four-foot high 70% opacity. 
and I think a lot of people would have had an issue with that. Right. Um, but when it's being shared that it will be a three foot high picket fence, um, I think that lessens the anxiety of the board in finding things. And of course, anything we can do to create a little more openness instead of having fences running literally lot line to lot line, I think helps um, with the overall look of a neighborhood as well. I think the reduced height as well as the opacity also helps with the safety backing out of that driveway. Right. Right, that whole corner and, you know, if the neighborhood is really full of two-year-olds, aren't they all shorter than three feet? So. They're very tall two-year-olds <laughs> in this neighborhood. Or not the children, the children on Dewey are exceptional, <laughs> I've heard. Um, Sounds like Lake Wobegon. What? S sounded like Lake Wobegon. Well, it is. Children it are is. above average. Um, so with that, once again, um, we do have to find that all seven standards have been met uh, for a major variation to be granted. And so we will go through those uh, particular standards. Um, I did want to make note, there was an, a letter from a neighbor in opposition to this? In opposition to the fence. To the fence. But I think we've addressed some of the concerns about the fence, um, but I do want to just note that that was something that was included in our packet so that if that neighbor were to look at our record, they would know that we did make um, acknowledgement of their concerns. Um, so with that, the standards for major variations. Number one, the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use and enjoyment of property values of adjoining properties. Um, the fact that this had been somewhat of a neglected uh, building that uh, seemed to be a very, very small house of about 800 square feet um, really sort of made it uh, not very practical for this neighborhood. And so I think by turning it into a, a starter home um, that will provide the space that, that a typical family would need um, definitely will have an increase on the adjoining properties in terms of the use, the enjoyment, um, nothing like sitting on your front porch and having to look at a neglected building across the street. Um, so I believe that this standard has been met. Number two, the requested variation is in keeping with the intent of the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance obviously would like us to uh, keep a, a wide variety of, of homes available to people of all incomes um, and walks of life. So it is nice to see that there is uh, interest being paid here in making a starter home um, that would be priced and built to accommodate a, a starting family. Um, so I believe that this standard has been met. Number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. When we look at the fact that this is an existing structure um, and the fact that it is on a, a fairly small lot, it's on one of our infamous corner lots, um, that sort of is, is not the typical uh, standard lot that we would like to see. Um, I believe that this does present some hardship and uh, our difficulty based on the layout of the property and therefore I believe this standard has been met. Number four, the property owner would suffer a particular hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the regulations were to be carried out. Again, making this a home that uh, would be logical for a family in 2014. Um, it really does need to have a certain level of amenities, um, even if it is a starter home. And obviously trying to sell this property in the condition that it is in um, would make no sense. And as we have heard and then mentioned before, the property did sit vacant for a long time. So obviously there were a number of people who did not have an interest in this property. So I believe this standard has been met. Number five, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property. Um, I believe the standard has been met. We again have had discussion about whether income is a, is a matter. We always believe, of course, that people should be able to make a profit off of their homes um, and especially 
people who are in the business of developing these homes provide a much needed benefit to the neighborhood because they sometimes can do things that um, a property owner themselves would not necessarily want to do by buying a home and then have to live through a year and a half of renovations. So whereas we do acknowledge that income will be, will be drawn from this, um, we don't see the home being overly aggrandized or anything like that. So I believe that this standard has been met. Number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property. The, the applicant purchased the property in the condition that it is in, and without um, him taking some action, the property would cease to exist probably in a very short period of time. Um, it sounds like there has been severe damage to the property itself, and so um, these are conditions that existed, so I believe that that standard has been met as well. Number seven, the requested variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation among the feasible options identified before the zoning board. Um, again, going back to what a family expects in a modern home um, with in terms of the number of bedrooms, having a functioning kitchen, um, having outdoor space for children to play, um, as well as having some outdoor area for adults to enjoy as well. And we also mentioned the, the fact that a garage is kind of considered standard in this area. Um, I believe that this standard also has been met. Has, does everyone agree with my findings on standards? Yes. 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 I'm going to steal her notepad so I can write. Okay. Um, with that, is there a motion um, paying particular attention to the issue of the fence, since that is something that is different than what has been proposed to us? I'll let Mary Beth make that motion. And um, no, front porch. also on the, on the front porch um, not being enclosed. I move in the matter 14 ZMJV-00101460 Dewey Avenue that we approve the requested rear yard setback, front yard setback, and front yard setback um, to build a addition and detached garage with the condition that the proposed open porch uh, not ever be enclosed. Um, and the applicant also applied for zoning relief to construct a fence and we're, I move to approve that with the following conditions that the Fence is no higher than three feet with 50% opacity. And that on the east side of the property, uh, the fence die into the house on the north side and on the east side, leaving the front yard in front of the house open. It has been moved. Um, I second the. Oh, sorry. And seconded. Um, just so to get sort of Melissa caught up, those were the two conditions we placed on it the roof or the porch not be enclosed and the fence be three feet, 50% uh, opacity, and having the um, footprint as outlined by Mary Beth in the motion. Um, all those in favor of granting said zoning relief, please say aye. 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 All, op all opposed? Therefore, the matter has five ayes and zero nays. The project is approved. Good luck with your project. And please make sure that Melissa gets that image. I have one uh, question. Yes. If you could come up to the microphone, please, just so we can. Thanks very much. I just had a question. Um, about where the fence running north yeah. on the eastern boundary. Can I return that just this side of the pathway, like a couple of feet? Um, Why wouldn't you just dye it into the house? Oh, it'll look real nice against the path because I'll plant it out. It'll match the front. It's about another three feet. Which path, though? Um, Sorry. The one, the one going into the house. 
from the street on Dewey. Instead of um, uh, right, just come a little further south, right there. Can I, can I, right there. Does that work? Oh, I think we were actually talking about it being all the way at the side of the, of the, of the screen porch. Oh, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, sort of where that dimension line is. Oh. Because that gives you some decent planting for the front yard then. Okay. And it, you know, when you're looking straight on at the house, you've got a house with a front yard can and I then a, a porch off the side. Okay, can I put a gate in it? Sure, you can put a gate Sweet. anywhere you'd like. Done. Perfect. <laughs> I look great. So just for the record, I have drawn onto the little printout <laughs> Melissa has given me. So basically, we're talking this corner here, yep. and then this corner dying into the porch here. Perfect. All right. So everyone has agreed on to that. Well, good. Thanks so much. Thank um, so that concludes that matter of business this evening. Um, is there an update on 1901? I just spoke with the applicant and they're requesting a continuance to the April 1st zoning board hearing. Well, there you go. All right. Um, with that being said, I will ask if there is a motion to continue 1901 Dempster to our meeting on April 1st. I move that in the matter that we move 14 ZMJV-0009-1901 Dempster to the next zoning board of appeals meeting on April 1st. It is removed. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to continue the matter for 1901 Dempster to our meeting on April 1st. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, is there any other issues to be brought before the board this evening? I will just say that the Peckish Pig is now open on Howard, <laughs> which is our new little brew pub down in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. So I invite everyone to come down and enjoy some handcrafted beers and some very good food, okay. none of which is heart healthy. Where, where is the Peckish Pig? Peckish Pig is Is this really the, on the record? <laughs> this is, we don't have to have this on the record. We'll stand adjourned.